This is a, an adult midge pattern that I tied for a friend. And it's one I call the Northern Midge. Basically named after the area where he was fishing. He was fishing up north and it did extremely well. And there's some nice tying methods in it I'm sure you'll like. And the fly itself can be tied in a few different colours. The most popular obviously is always, always going to be black. And you'll enjoy the way it's tied. Um, and as I say, you can tie them in different sizes. The ties 18s up. You can even go smaller but You'd have to change the body itself, just use thread instead of, in this case I'm going to be using foam. But anyway, hook in this kit is a babbler hook, it's a size 14, so as you see it's a grub shape hook. But you could use a standard shank if you want, it's up to yourself. Thread, it's going to be uni thread 8 in black. Start of the eye and just wind the thread down to in line with the point of the hook and then remove the waist piece. Now the body, it's interesting the body, you'll, you'll like this. You can see this is plaster, so a foam block that we uh, buy it from vineyards. And what you do is uh, just cut the, uh, cut the slices off it with a knife, different thicknesses, to get the thickness I want for the size of the fly them tying. And you can see sometimes I got a bad cut, you know, I got a kind of slice more than anything, but it's still worth having. But as you can see, it is, it's shiny on both sides. Now, that's not what it's like when you, you first cut it, it's really dull. Um, basically, it's just like in a dull, like this. Now, once you, what you've got to do to get it to shine like that, you need to be watch what you're doing. So, if you're going to try it, you need some greaseproof paper. And you want to put the foam between two sheets, like that, so the foam is within it. And then you want to iron. Obviously one side, turn it around and iron the other side. And what it does, that does is obviously melts the foam slightly and seals it up. Now the reason I do this is, originally I bought foam from a gentleman. I bought, it's a kind of stretchy foam, which I use in certain patterns. Now, the problem is you can't buy it anymore, it's just not in the market. So yeah, basically I wanted to make my own, and this is, this is what I came up with. So, not as is good but it still works and then you just cut say like in this case I'll get the size I want, I want at least a mil thick anyway and I want it around about just a mil and a half to two mil thick use your size to cut a slice off there we are now I just like to tape it a wee bit by pulling it now we'll get another fly out of the other piece and then the way down I tie it in. Now, just slightly stretch it as you go. As you say, it doesn't stretch as good as the original stuff, but it still works once it's tied in. And then you just come back up. Now to protect it, you have to do that. Just wind it over some super glue. Just this is Loctite super glue with the brush. And then when you go to start, it's just slightly, just a slight wee stretch. Just so you get a start or a taper, and then you work your way up, just forming the body. Slightly over, go winding over your last turn, and just to get a nice taper. Then you get to this point here where you tied it in, come across your thread, two or three turns to secure it. Now the super glue obviously is going to stick it to the, the hook and hold it and protect it and you get that nice, that shine, that's what you're wanting, that nice shine as well as a helmet to float the fly. Now for the legs, I'm basically, basically this is another one you have to do, this is a bronze mallard feather and what I've done is I've knotted it just as I would do pheasant tail. Now the colour is perfect for some of these flies, and whether you could use a grey side or a grey flank all you could do is, in this case, the bronze, the brown side, and it works. But if you don't want to do it, just lay it out all together, or just use pre-knotted pheasant tail fibres. Tie it up to yourself. Now I'm looking for six. Now if you bring it 90 degrees from the stem, the tips will line up. Just tear them off. Split them so there's three either side of the hook shank. There we are. Now you don't want them too long in this size of fly. Just come in and pull them to get the length that you like. Just 
hold them, come around with a couple of loose turns and slightly tighten up. See how the legs are going to sit. If you're happy, then just come in with three or four more turns. Trim away the excess. And you should end up with legs spaced out. Just like that. And that's what you want. And they get you that nice matte fibre. And they do last. They last longer than you think. Then, for the wing, this is coastal deer hair, natural form the wing. You could use CDC if you want or even just hackle points for the wings, it's up to yourself. Now I'm just going to open out the fibres, the cut ends and remove the fine fluff and broken ends just before you stack it. And so you put the tips in first, tap on your desk and that should line up the ends. There we are. Now length just slightly by the bend of the hook and then come in, pinch and loop on the top, keeping a hold of the, the deer hair and take your thread down and what I'm going to do is just make sure it stays on the top once I've got a good half a dozen turns in and then just take it down because I want to leave some of the deer hair over the front basically what happens just like an elk hair carries or so you leave some of the deer hair at an angle cut and when you pull the fly it gives it, it helps it to skate or bring it up so it's certainly worth leaving some now I'm just going to trim most of it away at this point but not at all, just so that I can control this while I'm winding the hackle I can move it out of the way now the hackle it's just a simple you want a longish fibred hackle in this case this is a Chinese cock hackle dyed black Fibre length. I say don't be sh don't be shy with the length of the fibre. Um, at least one and a half, probably one and a quarter of the gape. Then you remove the fluff from the bottom. So reel the stem. The tie with the front of the hackle facing yourself. Just come in two or three turns down. Just so you can grab the deer here, separate this, take the thread to the front and with the stem two or three turns to tie in. Now I'm just going to keep these out of the way, trim that away. You see you can, it helps. If you cut that short, it, most times it would get in the way. You can see what you're doing. And then you're looking three to four turns of the hackle. Best to put on an extra turn or so because you can always take it off because you can trim the fibres to suit yourself and just wind down to your happy lift the deer hair out of the way cross your thread basically come up nice and tight two or three turns for security I like to fold back the tip of the hackle come back up three or four turns always keeping the thread nice and tight come in then quick finish Tighten your foot finish up, trim away your thread, trim away your hackle, and then your deer hair. Now you want it, you obviously your deer hairs in front here, cut it at a slight angle, just as you do an elk hair caddis. And you're looking for a mill or so, a mill or two from the eye, and then trim. So it's a simple fly, good fun to tie. And all you have to do then, a bit of varnish onto the head just to seal everything up. Just make sure the eye's clean, get your dummy needle. And there we are. And that's basically your northern ridge. Always a set of flat black flies especially they're always worth having in your box, but that's certainly one I would have in my box. And as I say, have them different sizes and you'll not go too far wrong.